Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, I've got some good news, Chooms. Thanks to our good friends at Follicle Thought, we got some preem new deets on pyrolutamide. So, for those who haven't heard of Follicle Thought, they are a hair loss discussion forum where you can occasionally find interesting research on hair loss. So, they're kind of like Tressless without all the autism. But anyways, in case you've been living under a rock, pyrolutamide is the upcoming hair loss treatment from Kintor Pharmaceuticals, which has taken the hair loss community by absolute storm. And this time, it is for good reason. That is because pyrolutamide, also known as KX826, is undergoing clinical trials in both the United States and China, where it is being researched as a treatment for androgenic alopecia. In fact, as a sign of progress, we have what looks to be an actual trade name for pyrolutamide. It is going to be called Furitane, which sounds like an octane booster for your car, but it's cool that a trade name exists because it shows we're getting very close to getting an actual product here. What makes pyrolutamide especially promising, though, is that preliminary data suggests that it is at least on par, if not stronger, than 5AR inhibitors like finasteride and dutasteride. Additionally, it may even have a lower risk of side effects. So... This treatment is not a 5AR inhibitor that stops the conversion of testosterone into the trash hormone DHT. Rather, it is a direct androgen antagonist that prevents androgens like DHT from binding to the androgen receptor. The drug is applied topically in, in order to avoid systemic side effects. Now, there have of course been other topical androgen antagonists that have been studied and experimented with, like topical spironolactone, clascoterone, fluoridyl, as well as research chemicals like RU58841. The problem, though, is that none of these treatments have ever proven to be more effective than 5AR inhibitors, which makes them nothing more than adjunctive therapies at best. Pyrolutamide, however, strives to be even better than finasteride and dutasteride while having a lower side effect profile. It's been in development for a while, and I have covered previous research on the drug in videos, which I'll link below. But to sum up my findings, so far, things are looking good. The drug is currently in phase two trials in China and in the United States, but last May, some promising data from from the Chinese phase 2 study was leaked and I covered that in one of the videos I linked below. Although the data showed strong results from pyrolutamide with efficacy comparable to dutasteride, there was no information on the adverse reactions of the drug and there weren't a lot of details in general about the study because what was leaked was just a screenshot of a table. So we've been very patiently playing the waiting game ever since while crossing our fingers and hoping that pyrolutamide is as good as we hope it is. Fortunately, the Chinese phase 2 study was just presented at a Chinese medical meeting and was published on a Chinese website in the form of a poster. The poster is in Chinese, but the good folks at Follicle Thought ran the poster through a translation app which isn't perfect and there are some inaccuracies in the writing. Overall though, it is still legible enough for us to make out the results. So without any further ado, here are the results of the phase 2 study. The study enrolled 120 Chinese men with androgenic alopecia who were Norwood 3 to Norwood 5 in the severity of their hair loss. The study was a randomized controlled study with the men randomly assigned to topical pyrolutamide at a 2.5 milligram dose, which was a concentration of 0.25%, or a 5 milligram dose, which was a concentration of 0.5%, or they were assigned to a placebo solution. The 2.5 milligram dose was given twice per day, and the 5 milligram dose was given either once a day or twice per day. The primary endpoint of the study was the change in non-vellus hair counts, meaning normal hair counts per square centimeter with treatment. The study lasted 24 months. Table 1 here shows the characteristics of the subjects. The average age was in the mid-30s. You could see that the distribution of the severity of hair loss was pretty comparable amongst the groups, as was the number of smokers versus non-smokers. Well, here is the figure that shows the overall changes in hair counts. The left-hand figure shows the increases in hair counts in all the groups compared to baseline. You can see that there was an increase in hair counts even in the two placebo groups, which are the two bars on the left of the graph. But the increase in the three treatments groups was significantly higher. The 5 milligram twice per day dose had an increase in hair counts of about 22 hairs per square centimeter. The right hand graph just shows the improvements in the treatment groups above and beyond the improvements in the placebo control groups. Overall, 5 milligrams twice per day resulted in improved hair counts of 15.34 hairs per square centimeter. This is comparable to studies of finasteride and dutasteride. The graphs in the next figure look at the data over the course of the trial, with the graph on the left 
left showing the hair counts, and it looks like the graph on the right is looking at hair width, meaning hair thickness, basically. Again, the biggest improvement was with the 5 milligram twice per day dose. So this next table is the self-assessment and investigator assessment of improvement in the different groups. With 5 milligrams twice per day, 81% of subjects noted improvement by their own assessment, while 85% improvement was noted by the investigators. An objective third-party doctor, though, only noted 58% improvement. Still, despite that, it looks like there was quite a lot of subjective improvement. Even if we accept the 58% number, that is still very substantial. It goes along with the hair count improvements that were objectively measured. So this research further reinforces pyrolutamide's effectiveness as a hair loss treatment. So as far as adverse effects go, they occurred in 16.1% of subjects on treatment. The translated poster mentions that these side effects included a 5.9% incidence of something called Shenku disease. So I googled this Shenku disease and couldn't find anything on it, but maybe it was just mistranslated. One of the comments on the follicle thought forum though said that Shenku disease is just itchy skin, but I don't know that for a fact. The other side effects were contact dermatitis and a couple of subjects who had hyperglycemia, which is increased blood sugar, or they had hypertriglyceridemia, which means increased fats in the blood. It's not clear from the translation which disorder they meant, but the bottom line is that there were no serious side effects noted and no deaths, thank goodness. The investigators measured blood levels of both KX826, meaning pyrolutamide, and KX982, which is a metabolite of pyrolutamide, though I don't know if it also has antiandrogenic properties. The level of pyrolutamide was 0.3 to 4.1 nanograms per milliliter, and the metabolite was 0.4 to 10.4 nanograms per milliliter. This means there was some systemic absorption, but given there were no systemic antiandrogenic effects, it is likely that this degree of systemic absorption is negligible from a side effect perspective. Though, the phase 3 studies, which are already underway, will include hundreds of human subjects, which will clarify for sure whether or not there are any systemic side effects from this drug. So to summarize what the research from this study shows, there was significant hair growth with pyrolutamide compared to placebo. In fact, the results here show pyrolutamide is comparable or possibly better than finasteride and dutasteride, although we will need further data to confirm this for sure. It looks like the adverse effects are not things we typically associate with antiandrogens. For instance, we haven't seen any evidence of sexual side effects like low libido or erectile dysfunction. We know it goes systemic, but the levels of systemic absorption are low enough that it might not matter. Most of the actual side effects we've seen so far seem to be due to irritation of the scalp, but that is no different than what we see from any other kind of topical like minoxidil. Oftentimes, these kind of scalp irritation side effects aren't even attributable to the drug, but rather due to the carrier solution. So if you can handle other topicals, chances are you'll be just fine on pyrolutamide. So, we're not quite there yet, Chooms, but we're going to have more data on pyrolutamide coming out very soon, and everything we've seen so far is trending positive. Pyrolutamide sounds like it will be an outstanding treatment on multiple fronts. It will be a great option for people who cannot tolerate 5-air inhibitors and want an alternative, and it will also be a good choice for people whose hair loss is so incredibly severe that a 5-air inhibitor may not be enough. Pyrolutamide is not a 5-air inhibitor like finasteride. It is a direct androgen antagonist, so it can be a effectively stacked with finasteride or dutasteride for the ultimate hair loss stack, which will ensure even the most aggressive balders will be able to stop the slaphead curse dead in its tracks. So those who have been waiting for this, don't drop your finasteride minoxidil. We still have some ways to go, but we are officially a step closer to having a powerful new weapon to add to the hair loss witcher armory. And with that, I'll see you all next time. God bless.